Welcome to the inaugural podcast between Bohica Ice and the Crouching Walrus. We put this together to try to educate and uh, voice our opinions and what we'd like to see change in War Thunder and some of the other games that we play. Um, so first episode, we'd like to talk about kind of the state of War Thunder and um, where it's at. It's been kind of a rough couple months since the last patch. And um, first off, uh, I'd like to start with, like, what what you start playing War Thunder for, Walrus? Um, I started playing, I believe, when you started playing after uh, Robust made his first video about War Thunder. I just thought it looked cool. I wasn't even interested in World War II at all at the time, but I just I got into it and I've got more into it ever since. Yeah, I originally saw a Robust Canadian policeman bowfighter video, and then I I had to I've never heard of War Thunder before that. Looked it up. It was free to play. Started playing, and arcade was fun for a while, but the real me of the game has been a uh, realistic battle for me. Back in like 1999, I think I picked up Jane's Combat Simulator, and it was um, P51 was overperforming in that too. But I'm glad to see that there's finally this is the first I'd say uh, combat World War II dogfighter game that I've actually enjoyed. Um, and uh, where would you like to see it go from here, from where we're at right here today with War Thunder? Um, I'd like to see it go in the direction that they were initially saying that I was going to go in, and that's uh, basically more authentic with an uh, actual historical matchmaker and balance it a little bit more, obviously, because the matchmaker is neither historical or balanced at the, at the moment. And uh, basically just get to where where they were promising the game initially back when I started playing at 1.27. I know they've changed a bunch of those promises and broken some and added more, but it's uh, I think they should go in the direction that they were initially saying that they were going. Yeah, I initially started playing this game because I didn't really care about ground forces, um, and I, you know, ground forces navy. That's not why I start playing for. I start playing it for the airplanes, and I hope that's still going to be the focus of the game because I think that's where they have a unique market share. Um, I know they're going to draw in quite a few players from World of Tanks, but I think ground forces is going to be fun, but I don't think that's where the real meat of the game is going to be, at least for me. Um, and I just like to see they're pushing out so much content. I I wish they would really just try to fix the core game and then build out from that. I feel like they're just kind of plastering on band aids by new planes and new features, kind of. Yeah, um, I wasn't originally interested in ground forces at all, and I'm still that, that's still not exactly what I'm looking forward to the most. But I am looking forward to seeing how they incorporate that and air, like land and air, into actual battles. So. And how they're going to balance it, because that's going to be the biggest problem I fear, is that uh, like one Lancaster rolls over with his two 4,000-pounders, and goodbye tank spawn. But... E-47 OP. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the main thing, like we've been living in kind of like the post-apocalyptic world of post one point, or, uh, patch 1.37, and I think we've lost some players. Some are still on the fence. Some are playing less, and then some are still continuing on. And I feel part of the problem with 1.37 is that we all hate change as gamers and people. But there was so much change in 1.37, and not all of it was for the better. Um, and right now I'm on premium. Walrus is not a premium. I don't have a huge issue with the new RP system. Um, like especially for tier one, two, and three, it's not awful. But when I get to tier four, it's it's pretty hard to get planes up. And I know for you, you can't even do anything with the new economy as yeah, not I've, being a premium user. I've unlocked like three planes since the patch. <laughs> um, but the matchmaker, how do you feel with the new maps and the new uh, new matchmaker with the you know the battle ratings and like uh, I don't know how. Oh, where it right goes now, from here. well, right now it's horrible, <laughs> but uh, I think that's mainly because they haven't. They say that it's the base. The battle ratings are based off of data, and I, I don't think since the patch just came out, they don't have really any data for it yet at the moment. So I think that can only get better. And I do like the new battle rating system in the way that it can make, it can essentially make whole new tiers for historical battles and arcade battles and also simulator battles, because uh, you know how it's it's different for each game mode. So that's actually one thing I do like about that matchmaker. I was going to say, in realistic battles, the kind of problem is that you can jump into E1 and end up in a Tier 3 game, depending on if you're on off-peak hours, which most of us in North America, we're on kind of the 17,000 or less players. But if you get on 
nine o'clock in the morning, you can usually get in a good, you know, E1, E3 uh, kind of matchup in that tier area. But I wonder how battle ratings are actually working for arcade, because in RB, they can kind of be, um, you can actually jump a lot, a lot more than you should in Matchmaker. Um, um, I remember seeing videos of uh, three tier spreads <laughs> in arcades, yeah. so I don't think it's any better in that. All right. So, wishful thinking, but I think the battering system would work in a world with 50,000 players on all the time. I think kind of the problem is Matchmaker is trying to spread too thin, and, uh, you know, so. Um, but like I said, there's a lot of players who have been unhappy about the game, and I don't want this to become a bitch fest, but we're going to do a little bit of, you know, criticizing Gaijin, and uh, what we'd like to see from them, and how to make this game better, because both, Walrus and I both see the huge potential in this game, and we want nothing but for the best for the game, for the you know community. This is supposed to be entertainment, and uh, at times of late, it doesn't really feel like entertainment for a lot of us. Um, I know the biggest thing for you and a bunch of our members is flight models. Has always been. I know that's with Kobe. I know it's with Firefly. You know yourself that flight models has always been the biggest kind of game breaking point. Um, have they made any huge progress with that in your eyes, or? Um, not particularly. The one. One thing off the top of my head that I can definitely point out that they did a good job with was the the Tempest flight model, which, as you if you played uh before 1.37, you know and had the Tempest, you know the Tempest was one of the worst flight models in the game. That was unplayable. And actually, yeah, now it's one of the best planes in the game as it should be. So they did a really good job with that flight model. They fixed the Doras and uh, besides the overheating. But off other than that, the only things that I can really think of are negative. They've actually think, made some yeah. flight models worse. I think it all comes down to my book. What I've I've been trying to figure out what is wrong with War Thunder for about two months now. And it's all boiling down as I keep looking at the problem to quality control inside their own studio. And that's one of the hardest things to do, especially with new people, people leaving. I don't I'm not at their Moscow studio. I don't know. Um generally if a game company though, you want to make one you know, you want a you want a quality standard. And if uh, your employees aren't matching that, then you have problems, you have inconsistencies. And I know one of your forum posts was, you know, some flight models are underperforming, some are overperforming, but, you know, it doesn't seem that much. But when you put a Spit Mark 9 next to something that is slightly underperforming, the, it's a huge difference. Yeah, like um, P-38 versus I-185. <laughs> I-185, you may have an argument that says maybe it's not overperforming that much. P-38 is underperforming so much that it makes the... the the performance gap just exponentially bigger. So in my eyes, I think it all comes down to if I had to blame what what is Gaijin doing, I think it's just poor project management. Um I I don't wanna, you know, personally I don't want to call anybody's names there, but I just feel that you know, some things are priority, some things aren't. You don't really know. I know some things get fixed in a week and then we've been waiting for a P thirty eight flight model. I paid forty forty bucks for the Pacific pack or whatever it was <laughs> last year and I still don't have a damn P thirty eight flight Bad model. Bad choice. <laughs> <laughs> And so it's like I don't know where their priorities are, and but it's like it's a whole quality control thing is that they just cut stuff out when it's like it's good enough, cut it, good enough, cut it. And it's so much work to go back and identify tweaks. I know that's a multiplayer game, so it's going to be balancing, but it's like if they just had a good quality control system before they signed off on things and put it in the game, I think it would just cause so much less heartache for us and so much less work for them in the future. I'm starting to think that they don't have any testers <laughs> in the <laughs> studio, and they just use us as, as basically testers because I don't know how you could you could look at the say the Ki eighty four's flight model that's the new plane one point three seven for the Japanese. They've been waiting for that plane for like a year, <laughs> and <laughs> they, they hype it so much. They hype it so much, and then all of a sudden you get this. <laughs> like, did they test this plane at all? Yep, I I, I just feel like. You know, guys, if you want um, testers, Walrus and I, let's call it fifteen dollars an hour. You know, we're available <laughs> forty, fifty hours a week. And work but fifteen it's... golden eagles an hour. Call me. <laughs> <up>. <laughs> um, and uh, the last two points I want to talk about for guys are uh, communication and broken promises. There's been a lot of that, and I don't know if that's part of the problem of them being a Russian company and we're being English-speaking Americans over here. And you know, is it because we don't speak their native language? I know there's translation barriers or um, but I know a lot of games. I've been in, like I've been with the Natural Selection Two team since you know they're closed alpha and did a lot of testing with them. And um, there's a certain amount of information that I feel that you should pass to your players. And one thing that NS2 did well, which if Gaijin 
really wants to, you know, get some really good points with their community, is put up a change log of, you know, they had like a red, orange, green system of red is um, what they what what is most critical needs to be fixed now. Orange is, you know, non-priority but what they should be working on. Green is good to go on the next patch. And you could go onto their, you know, website and you could pull up what their staff is currently working on. And and that's the thing is we it's kind of like a black hole with you know, Gaijin's communication and what, what what the hell are they doing? Yeah, well, in their defense, I've seen a, a quite a few topics that like one every pretty much big every big patch they they seem to put out a topic on the forums that say like it says what's the most like what's the biggest priority to be changed for this patch? Like the community managers will put out a topic saying like flight models and uh, matchmaker balance issues like that, and people will vote in a poll to see which ones. Uh, the biggest priority for the community for that to get fixed, but they've been doing that. I said, as I said, for the past couple of patches, and they don't seem to actually be. <laughs> yeah, using where, where that does data. that data actually go? Like, yeah. you know, does does he just go ha ha ha, comrade, and then put in a shredder? <laughs> like, I, I don't know where the information goes, and I just like, you know, just to, just to sharing. Like, we're we're players. We really care about this game. We, you know, most of us, you know, Lars and I put in over a thousand hours easy. We probably put in what five hundred hours doing freaking flight testing, <laughs> and. uh <laughs> You know, we just we'd like to know what what goes on in their studio. You know, like you know, we're happy to make War Thunder part of our lives, and we just you know want to feel part of it. I guess. Um, yeah, I think the biggest part of the problem is, as you said, the uh, language barrier. But the community the community managers, I think, are the ones supposed to be picking up for that and and basically translating stuff or or conveying stuff for the devs to us. And they're, I'm sure most of them do their best, but if the devs can't communicate directly with us, a lot of them, which a lot of them can't, and it's going to cause problems. And the last thing I want to talk about regarding Gaijin is um, they call this game still a beta, you know, open beta. And, and I heard a post on Reddit um, with somebody explaining, you know, is it a beta anymore? Like, with the community events, with the sales, with, you know, this and that, they still want to call it an open beta. And I feel that's kind of a crutch to say, yeah, it's still buggy. We're still implementing things. I know this game's going to be, um, there's going to be probably new features for what, another two or three years, but. At what point are you going to call this game, you know, is it going to be officially released in, what, 2017 when when we're not playing anymore? Like, so... Honestly, I think the game is going to be forever a beta, because <laughs> you, can look at, you can look at the PS3, it's, it's been officially released for the, I mean, the, not the PS3, the PS4, PS4. it's been f- officially released. So, I mean, that, that just points to me that this, this is a game, this is being commercially produced. It's it's not just a test anymore. It's being, people are paying subscription fees for it. Yep, I I I'm on a year premium, and I would just you know, I just see you know War Thunder open beta. Every time I see that web page, I kind of chuckle. Like, you know, once yeah. once this thing went live, you know, own up to it. Say it's a released product, and you know it's a persistent universe essentially for War Thunder. You know, add on features. We understand that ground forces is it done, naval is it done, new planes are coming. We don't want a version 5.0 War Thunder in the year 2017 being the full release, you know. Um, you know, fix what we have now before we add in more content. That's that's all I'm asking for. Yeah, that, that also kind of makes me mad when, whenever they, the devs actually do respond to the community and say, we've got, we got so much on our plate, and uh, you can't expect all this thing to be, all this to be fixed at once. Well, just stop adding content and fix what we already have in the game. <laughs> that will make it easier on you. I understand that it's a lot of work, but they just keep pumping out more and more broken flight models, more and more broken mechanics that needs fixing. Then they, if they just focused on what we had in game, then maybe people wouldn't be in such an uproar on the forums and such. Um, and the other half of this, you know, is is the community and the players. And um, first off, I like to say that I've met a lot of new people in my year and a half now in War Thunder. Um, a lot of them being international. I've never played a game that I've met people from Germany, Russia, Poland, you know, uh, was it Spain, Italy, you know, Britain, um, where else? I don't even know. Um, it's insane. I've never played, you know, 15, 16 years of PC internet gaming. I've never met this many people from so many uh, cultures and countries, and I think that's really neat. I, I hope that's, you know, something that continues in the future. Um, Except for those uh, Russian hackers. <laughs> yeah, that's the other part. Is there seems to be a lot of Russian um, and English uh, hate 
you know, you see the, the Russian, you know, language and then you see vodka, 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 drink, drink, drink. And, and I guess that's to be expected. You know, the world's not a perfect place. I don't think it's Russism. I think it's just a misunderstanding of cultures and languages. Um, <laughs> there's always going to be that barriers. I, I didn't take, you know, six years of Russian at the University of Moscow, so I have no clue what the hell they're saying to me. And I, they're probably cussing me out. They're saying I-5. I don't know. <laughs> um, but the community has been kind of a vile place since uh, 1.37 on the forums, on Reddit and the games. It's always been like people are trying, and it's frustration. I understand it's frustration about since that patch, but it's like people are just kind of vile, and and um, everybody's just like trying to one up each other. And I hate visiting the forums anymore, except just to get information because it's it's constantly people stepping on each other's throats. Yeah, um, I think it was a. Uh, I was talking about you. I was talking about this with you a couple of days ago, I think. But remember the uh, challenges for the closed beta tanks. Oh yeah. Remember how bad the community was back then and how how the game unplayable the game was because of all those challenges. <laughs> those just... community events are, are like a shark full of tanks and throwing a freaking minnow into it and just watching the sharks murder each other. Um it's like, "Oh, look, 28 kills with a king cobra to get, you know, a Russian king cobra." That's easy, except there's 42,000 king cobras in each game, kill stealing, ramming Cause you know it's just I don't know preschool and you know I don't know in one ball, yeah. um and it's just I, ugly. Yeah, I actually even stopped doing the challenges about halfway through, but even after that, the game was pretty much unplayable for me because everyone else was biting <laughs> each other's heads for the challenges. <laughs> yeah, God forbid, do not fly a bomber when you see big cannon or anything Cobra challenges because you know <laughs> they will all head on you, fly directly to the forehead. Um. And the last thing I'd like to say about the community is I, I've I've reread it. I read the forums every day. You know, I watch a lot of YouTube videos, and it seems like everybody has a different vision and a different demand from Gaijin. And I think it's really hard for community managers to relay this information back to the devs, because some people want paper airplanes, some people want you know uh, prototype airplanes, some people want flying tanks, some people want this, some people want that, and it's like I, I feel like Gaijin in some ways is being pulled in 300 different directions. And I think that as a community, we need to put our, you know, try to narrow down our demands of this game and at least give Gaijin a uh, fighting chance to um, make the product that we want. I think it's actually partially on Gaijin, though, because they really haven't been clear on their goals of the game. I don't even know if they have any goals at this point, any set goals at least for the game. And uh, War Thunder's picked up new players along the line. We, we both started playing around like 1.27, I think. Yeah, around there. A little bit before and, that, I think, for me. Yeah. And, and uh, so, I mean, we, we've started playing back when guys was making their pretty much original promises of historically authentic matchmaker, good flight models, stuff like that. Now they've moved on to saying maybe they'll be a little bit lenient with the cutoff years and, and stuff like that, adding Japanese sabers and Russian... And, uh, and uh, German MIGs and stuff. They've just been a adding adding new stuff, breaking promises, adding new promises. <laughs> and so some people are, are joining the game after seeing some of these new promises, and they don't necessarily have the same expectations as people that started playing earlier on. My expectations are when I see it posted on the launcher tab on the left saying, you know, this has been added, I go, oh, cool. I, I don't even bother kind of looking at what, what the future holds because it, it changes almost in flux every day. Well, that's what it feels like to me. Um, yeah, from but, from reading some of the AMAs and the, and such, I've, I've gathered that they don't really have a set direction of the game that they're going. Well, that kind of goes back to my project management, you know, uh, statement I made earlier. Is that, you know, it's an investment. Every game will fail if they do not have strong project management. Yeah, this is what, this is back. This is when they fall back on the it's a beta, <laughs> it's a beta, it's a beta <laughs> excuse. Yeah, it's always yeah. changing. Um. So anyway, uh, this kind of wraps up our first podcast. Uh, if you guys have any questions, suggestions, is there any topics you want to hear from us? Um, and I know I get questions on the on the channel. I'm sure Walrus does. I get channel you know messages in game, uh, emails from you guys asking questions. We'd be able, you know answer. Oh my gosh, happy to answer them. <laughs> <laughs> um, in the future, and uh, we couldn't actually come up with a name because we're kind of creatively stumped. So if you have a name for the, <laughs> yeah, the the bow time crouching walrus podcast, you know, uh, endeavor, if you have a good name for it, you know, something uh, short and snazzy, we'd like to hear it. And uh, next week we're actually gonna start with our first guest. It'll be uh, as you know, Kobe will be from the film montages. 
Um, he actually does know a lot about airplanes, and we're gonna do a aircraft familiarization. And you never know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, he's actually been our go-to guy every time we have a question about engines, about control surfaces, about models. Um, you know, he he studied this stuff now for, God, probably 20 years. I don't know. Um, but we're gonna talk about, you know, control surfaces, uh, engines, and kind of the more mechanics of how the real-world airplanes uh, relate to War Thunder airplanes, and how can it make you a better pilot. Um, so be sure to tune in next week, and if you haven't subbed to Crouching Walrus's YouTube, he has uh, combat tactics, what else, he got flight model analysis over there, um, mm -hmm. cinematics, and a badass chocolate chip cookie recipe. Oh yeah, I haven't uploaded in about two months, but I'm working <laughs> on, I've been working on a, a new tactics video as my thousand subs video that I got, I think two weeks ago, then. <laughs> and um I've been working on that for a couple weeks, so stay tuned for that if you actually do sub to my channel. Alright, so for Bohick Ice and Crouching Mars, uh, we're going to sign off and let's go play some more Thunder.